Welcome traders to another Tickmill earnings report preview with me Patrick Manavi. Before we jump into today's report, obviously as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and most importantly with respect to this presentation, the views expressed by me are solely mine and they are not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at JP Morgan who are set to announce their earnings before the open on the 14th of July. We're looking for an EPS earnings per share of $2.89 on a revenue of $31.806 billion. The market expects JP Morgan to deliver a year-over-year -year decline in earnings on higher revenues when it reports its results. Revenues are expected to come in in line with consensus. The consensus EPS estimate for the quarter has been revised 0.14% higher over the last 30 days. And I should say there is uh, an earnings whisper out on the street that uh, we could see rev uh, the EPS come in as high as $3.06. This is essentially a reflection of how the analysts covering uh, collectively reassess their initial estimates over this period. Q2 2022 results are poised to benefit from rising rates, continued loan growth, and modest credit losses. But investors are more focused on potentially looming recession talk. And we expect this outlook commentary to really steal the show in this uh, earnings call. Prospects for continued loan growth and the potential for investment banking activity levels are continuing to rebound among the primary areas of concern. At the end of June, the Fed released uh, its year's annual stress test results. These are important as they have an impact on the bank's ability to return cash to their investors via dividends and share repurchases. JP Morgan did not perform very well during this year's stress test. It made the cut, but it's common equity tier one ratio was not a lot higher compared to the regulatory minimum. This was at least partially the case due to the Fed modeling a pretty harsh recession with unemployment jumping to 10% and commercial real estate prices dropping by 40%. As a result, JP Morgan's stress capital buffer or SBC rose to 4% from a previous level of 3.2%, one of the highest amongst the US banks. The increased capital reserve level means that JP Morgan's ability to return cash to its owners will be somewhat limited this year. The company has, as a result, decided to keep its dividend at the current level of $1 per share per quarter, instead of going for a dividend increase, which the bank had generally done following the Fed, st Fed stress test results in previous years. Still, even with the dividend being maintained at current levels, instead of being raised, the dividend yield is pretty solid at 3.5%. That is not only higher compared to one that get from treasuries, it is also more than twice that of the S&P 500's dividend yields. Okay, let's take a look at some statistical patterns, stock trading patterns around the earnings release. Shares have moved lower in the immediate aftermath of of earnings 8 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved down 1.3% uh, in the first day of trading after the company reported. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, JP Morgan is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 0.9%. On average, the stock has moved lower by 0.7% one week after earnings. Options traders are pricing in a 3.5% move on the earnings release. However, the stock has actually only averaged a 2.3% move in recent quarters. And from a sentiment and flow perspective, it's noteworthy that there has been notable buying of 5,221 contracts of the $115 call expiring this Friday. Options order flow in general is bullish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has only 39% expecting an earnings beat. 62% of Wall Street analysts retain a bullish outlook for the stock in general. Now let's take a look at the technical perspective and see where we might uh, identify some near-term trading opportunities. Obviously, stock has been in a, a pretty significant downtrend. And ultimately, I'm looking for price to test into this weekly high volume mode just below the $100 level 
We also had a 78.6% retracement of the entire uh, post-pandemic advance coming in at 97.89. Now, bearing in mind that uh, the interest in that call uh, structure for the Friday expiry, I could see the potential of a pop here to the upside, but I would be using any near-term strength, especially into this 120, 121 area. I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns there to re-engage on the short side, and ultimately I'm looking for that test down just sub $100, which is an area where I'll be watching for uh, longer-term opportunities to build a longer-term bullish position in JP Morgan. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.